Hey everyone, today we're going to show you how to take down your classic MFU equipped rear hub. This applies to the hubs with a 6 bolt brake flange and have our new MFU driver and axle assembly. You'll need a couple of tools for this. A 2.5mm hex key and a small bore bearing puller or end cap puller to fit the end caps on your hub. Before we begin, you want to make sure your hub has the brake rotor and the cassette already removed. Start by removing the drive side end cap. This can be pulled off with a firm tug of hand, or in stubborn circumstances you can use the bearing puller or end cap puller to remove the end cap from the axle. When using the bearing puller, be sure to find the small gap between the end cap and the axle to engage the collet. Once secure, go ahead and walk the end cap off the axle. Once that's been removed, you can now remove the free hub by pulling off the axle and off of the spline assembly on the driver. The spline interface is the same for XDR, Shimano Microspline, or Hyperglide Freehub bodies, as well as the Campy N3W. Now you can go ahead and push the axle towards the brake side of the hub. A firm press and the axle can now be pulled out by hand through the brake side. The next step is to remove the driver from the hub. This is a slip fit between two bearings and both clutches, so a firm pull will be needed to remove it from the hub shell. Once removed, go ahead and inspect the driver for any signs of water, dirt, debris, or contamination. Then go ahead and take a look at the hub shell and do any bearing service that might be necessary. Once you've completed that, you can go ahead and start reassembly by installing the driver using a counterclockwise rotation while inserting into the hub. This will open up the clutches and allow you to seat the driver completely against the 6805 support bearing. Once installed, give it a counterclockwise rotation to ensure it is spinning freely. Next up, we're going to install the axle. Now, we didn't do any bearing service in this, but in case you did, it is always suggested to loosen the preload collar and reset this when reassembling the hub. Go ahead and use your 2.5 hex key, loosen the pinch bolt, and unthread the collar counterclockwise. Then install the axle with the long shoulder end first. You'll see this seat into the driver on the drive side, and you'll feel the O-ring seat on the axle from the non-drive side when pressed firmly. If out of alignment, it may cause the driver to protrude slightly from the hub. Next, install your free hub body. Make sure that the splines are greased with a waterproof or marine grease. This will key onto the driver and seat flush against the hub shell. Last, you can go ahead and install your end cap with a firm press to seat the O-ring onto the axle. Once the hub is reassembled, we want to adjust the preload. Since the hub design has a floating axle assembly, this needs to be done under compression. To simulate this, we're going to use a bearing press to clamp the hub down as if it is tightened and torqued into a frame using the through bolt or a quick release skewer. It is best to perform this when the through bolt on the frame is torqued down to the manufacturer's recommended torque spec. Now with the preload collar loose, you'll notice that the hub has some side to side play. The collar can be rotated counterclockwise or clockwise to adjust this. Counterclockwise will loosen the preload and allow for more side to side play clockwise will tighten the preload and remove the side-to-side -side play. You want to adjust this until you find the sweet spot where there is no side-to-side -side play in the hub and the bearings are not overloaded as to slow the hub from spinning. Keep in mind that too much or not enough preload will diminish your bearing life in the hub. Once you are happy with the adjustment, go ahead and align the pinch bolt on the collar to the small groove on the brake flange. Then use your 2.5 millimeter hex key to tighten the pinch bolt snugly to hold the adjustment. Once that is complete, you're done with the rebuild and ready to get the bike back out on the trail.